Vanessa Zamora here. Sitting with me now is Steve Plunkett. He handles search and social and content strategy at uh, Rockfish. He's got a new title. It's a senior search scientist at Rockfish. Oh, sweet. Scientist. Very cool. So, you've been doing this for 16 years, um, yes. and we are now on day, our last day, actually, of PubCon. Um, you know, I haven't heard anything really significant that stood out like last year, the last two years were, you know, social, social, social. Right. Um, what do you think it is that we need to be looking at right now based off of PubCon and your experience in the industry? Well, I think the thing is, is, is there's two schools of thought. There are the people that want to generate the right content and they want to provide the most uniquely relevant results to the searcher. And that's really all Google really wants because that, that that's a, drives their ad revenue, everything. If you, if you can go in and, and make the, the Make the term that people want. Put them on the contact page. If someone says, I want to know this, and they type it in and they get the right page, they go to that page. That's where the bounce rate came in because we want to know how relevant the result is for the query. And so we go after what are the most relevant results, okay? We go to the, um, we go to the receptionist. We go to the C-level. We go to the marketing people. Give us 10 keywords you think people would put in. Okay, now what would you put in? And so we'd correlate those to where what people naturally ask for, and a lot of times those none are focused on for search terms. So we provide the content that that person wants by doing search persona development to find out what that person's needs is, where they're at in the buying cycle. How do we find that magic keyword or magic keywords that when people type it in, they're looking to buy? Get them in, get, where's the decision making stage? Where are they at? Um, and I think there's two schools of thought between you either do content or you do links. Some people do content outside and then link back in. And I think that's disingenuous because realistically, you make the content, if it's the right stuff, people will come and people will do it. And Google realizes that, recognizes it, and, and really actually has a good quality score on PPC and all that's for content. So I think that's the most important thing you can do is content. And then Landing page optimization, the Tim Ash, Joanna Lord, Brad Geddes panel. I wish we could do a three-hour one on that because that's the most valuable information. I mean, that's honestly, uh, I'm speaking at PubCon, but there's one panel that I did not miss. I've had on my calendar since it was announced. That's the one I went to. That's the one I sat in the front row on. That's the one that I bought the third version of Tim Ash's book because it's really good information. And every single thing in, that was in that session is an actionable item for me next week when I go back for, you know, 20, 30 SEO clients. Can you share one one actionable item with us so that maybe the audience um, at home can, can apply it? Look at your forms, okay? Don't be confusing. Don't autofill. There you go. Perfect. Don't autofill forms, okay? Um, if you capture somebody's email address, it's kind of creepy. All of a sudden, I'm on a form and you've got this stuff. Maybe you wanted it autofilled. That's fine and you're used to that. But don't... Also, don't put what you want... In that field, there you go, this is a perfect one. When you have a form, don't put what you want the searcher or the person that's filling out the form to put in, in the field. Put it to the side, say example, and then put it a little italics side. But don't fill that blank because our brains look for the empty fields to fill out. And if you want one takeaway, that's, that's the bomb, that's it. I'm gonna, I gotta go back and check all our forms now. And you do too. Um, okay, so moving forward, what do you think we're going to see over the next year? Do you are your clients uh, asking for something specific, uh, mobile or other things think, that we're hearing are kind of coming up in the future here? I think we have to talk about mobile. I think we have to talk about HTML5 versus Flash going away. Um, Flash has given us a lot of visual stuff that was great, but now it's not going to work on mobile devices. And right now, I went to a particular web page and I wanted to share an article, but they had that Flash ad. So the Flash ad covered the pop up in mobile, so I couldn't submit. Because the bit, and so then I had to click on the ad to get the share, and then when I clicked on the ad, the mobile browser got hijacked, and I had to shut off my phone to get it to work. So I think there's a lot of usability issues in that of converting the searcher. So that's when usability comes in UXIA, that's where it's going to start to matter. But I think it's more of um, your footprint of your brand on the web. I think that the, the way search is going to evolve into is going to be there's either an association with a brand or there's not. Meaning I'm going to type in. Um, See what can I use? It's not a client. Um, uh, fitness equipment. I don't have a fitness equipment coach, so I can use this. Let's say fitness equipment versus um, Joe Weeder fitness equipment. Okay. If I have an association with a brand, I put in Weeder fitness equipment. If I don't know any brands of fitness equipment, I'm just going to put in fitness equipment, and that's where our branded and non-branded. I think local um, is hugely important because that's mobile. Um, it's not only IP addresses of where your servers are and your searches are through Google now. It's the GPS thing on your phone. 
Um, I think privacy is there's a big backlash coming in privacy. I think uh, Facebook is, um, you know, probably going to cause there's going to be one big bad virus, Facebook, and that's it. They're done because Google Plus is there and Google Plus rollout for business today. And that's going to fit in with analytics, webmaster tools, um, blogger is going to be that point. Um, it's just there's so many things that the, the future is so cool with Google Plus. And by the way, Google, can you wait a week? <laughs> I've got all kinds of emails I can answer about Google Plus now. But um, if they would have done it next week, it would have been great. But my next week is doing the work I've already been assigned, plus not sleeping and yeah. doing Google Plus pages for clients. Okay, so we're going to need to wrap up shortly, but um, how can companies capitalize on Google Plus since that's rolled out now? Can um, you give us some tips on that? I would say um, search for G Plus as a hashtag on Twitter. Start watching people, but take everything with a grain of salt. There's a lot of people that are going to say a lot of different things. Um, there's some credible things. Stay tuned to PubCon's website because we're starting to update the blog and the speakers are doing it. Um, uh, find a ticket to come to PubCon Paradise in Hawaii because I'm doing I'm doing a Google Plus presentation in Hawaii and because I've I've been doing a lot of stuff that I can't talk about with Google Plus previously that will be rolled out that has been rolled out and there's a lot more stuff blogger and all that kind of neat stuff um so i'm definitely going to go out how that affects search how that counts but um so yeah that's okay. we'll, look, we'll look forward to um hearing about google plus and how that plays into everything at a pubcom paradise this is steve plunkett i'm vanessa zamora thank you so much for joining